everyone, welcome to the Oaklands YouTube channel. As you can tell, this video is a little bit different. We're gonna try something new. This is this is today a sit and sew. So it's not a tutorial, but we are gonna be making an item that I have done a tutorial on before. Today we're gonna be making the Lynn's Handmade Family Travel Organizer. So we've done a full tutorial for this already on my domestic machine. I will have a link for that down in the description of this video. Today, we are going to try to make this again, but this time we're gonna use leather and waterproof canvas and we're gonna do it on my industrial sewing machine. So if you've been following me on social media, you know that a while ago I got a brand new sewing machine. I got the Juki 1541S. It is an industrial machine, meaning I can make almost whatever I want thickness wise. I'm not, probably not gonna be making a quilt on this machine, but if I wanted to make some leather car seats, I probably could if, you know, I knew how. <laughs> so I want to try it out. So I've been trying it out on like very easy things, very simple things. I haven't made like a full on like luxurious leather bag yet, but I wanna try to make something I've already made, but using tougher material, something I probably couldn't use on my Bernina. So just to give you a reminder, this is what the travel organizer looks like. It's got a little flap here, you open it up. We've got card slot pockets, a zipper, passport pockets here. So when we were building this the first time, name of the game was thin seams, thin seams, thin seams. I'm using this leather today. This is genuine leather, it's not faux leather vinyl. It is thick. So we're not gonna have thin seams. And hopefully the machine's going to be good about it. Hopefully. So I already told you about the machine. I'll give you a little snapshot of my area in just a moment. The needles I'm using with this machine are these Graz Beckert. I'm using size 21. These are DP17. I'll show you that right there. There you go. The thread I'm using is Filtech Tech 70. This is what it looks like, and I'll have a link for where I get this down in the description of this video. I, as you can see, I have a second camera over here, so I'm gonna do my best to give you decent angles of what I'm doing. Like I said, this is not a full tutorial, so I'm not gonna be explaining everything. We're pretty much trying to see what do we get hung up on, what works well, how does the machine work tension-wise, do we run into any problems? I am still such a newbie to this machine, and the only way I'm going to learn it is if I use it. And unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of extra free time to sew if I'm not doing a video for it. So this is what we're gonna do on the industrial for the time being. We're going to do sit and sew so that way I can actually play with it and you guys can learn a little bit about it as well. All right, let me show you the sewing space real quick. Okay, so you can see this is my machine. There's where I'll have my pattern. There's the threads, camera. And then up here I have a bunch of swatches of leather and then all of my threads that I can use with this machine. Cool thing about this machine is it has a really large presser foot. Ignore all those cords down there. I still don't have that situation figured out just yet. All right, so if any of the angles are a little wonky or if the audio is a little wonky, I do apologize for that. This is my first time doing a video like this. All right, I'm gonna do my best to get the lighting on this as good as possible, but it is a little tricky. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sew waterproof canvas to waterproof canvas. And I will be wearing glasses while I'm doing this today because I get very nervous about needles breaking and hitting me in the eye. So I wear glasses when I sew very thick seams. Okay, so this is the thinnest combination of material I'm using today, waterproof canvas on waterproof canvas. So I'm just gonna line this up like the pattern suggests, right sides together. Okay, now I'm just going to sew along that line. And I have the speed set to as slow as it'll go, which is still not that slow. Okay, so we're gonna go back to a couple. Ooh, you're it's very nerve wracking. I will say, I think my stitch is way too big right now. So I'm gonna have to, um, 
I'm gonna have to lower that. I'm gonna have to decrease that stitch real quick. And I'm gonna back stitch. Okay, so whenever you're done, you're gonna push the knee lever up and then pull the back to hold it. And then I've seen a lot of people, you twist your wheel a little bit to kind of loosen up the thread so you can easily pull it out and then snip it. Okay, we need to lower the stitch length. The stitch length is a little big. Let me show you. Do you see how long those stitches are? I have it set to a five, which is, it looks like a five millimeter stitch length and I need to lower it. Now on an industrial, we're not gonna use like a two and a half millimeter stitch length because our thread is so thick. We don't want that. I think the lowest we go is like a three or a four. So I'm gonna try to set it to a three, maybe like a three and a half millimeter stitch length for regular stitching. And then I'm gonna up it to a five millimeter for top stitching. I, I honestly have no idea if that's right. But I have seen you wanna put down the reverse and then turn it. Is that right? Yeah. Or else it makes it very hard to turn this little knob. Yeah, we'll try that. Okay, yeah, we'll try that. I don't know. Okay, I went ahead and grabbed my super sticky tape. This, you, nobody ever gets that reference. Has anybody watched Umizoomi? If you have little kiddos and you want them to learn their math, watch Umizoomi. I don't know if you can find it on Amazon or not, but watch Umizoomi, it is so good. But in there, there's like super sticky glue, so. You probably did not care about that, but that's okay. All right, so now I'm just working on my pocket here. So I'm gonna clip open the hole in this pocket. Again, this is not a full tutorial. If you'd like the full tutorial, I have it in the description down below. You know what? I just decreased my stitch length and I'm gonna go top stitch now. Isn't that how it goes? Okay, so now I adjusted my stitch length to three. You know what? I don't care. Let's just see what it looks like at three and a half with top stitching. So you can see I'm not using any sort of a zipper foot here. I'm just using the foot that came with my machine. I have zipper feet for this, I just don't have them installed. So we'll just see how this works. All right, that's a much smaller stitch length. Back stitch. You're a little itty bitty stitch length, that's cool, okay. I like knowing that I don't have to Stitch in leaps and bounds. I'm just gonna use the hand crate to put the needle down so I can turn my material. I will tell you this uh, industrial sewing machine does not make me any straighter of a top stitcher. So if you were hoping a machine like this is gonna make you a straighter top stitcher, it won't. But it does make it a lot easier. I mean, this is, this is much, this is very easy right now, which is why I bought it. I bought the machine because I wanted it to be easier to sew harder things. You know, I want to be able to do harder things. I just don't want it to be impossible. One more stitch. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. So there is our stitching. As you can see, it's a pretty small stitch. I know usually top stitching, we do bigger stitches, but I just wanted to see, this is a three and a half on the machine and that looks pretty good. Here's the back. So the tension looks really good. I'm happy with that. That's where I backstitched. All right, it's looking good so far. I like it. All right, what do we do next? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold each of my card slot tops and then I'll top stitch each one. Lila. I'm gonna top stitch each one of these folds one at a time and then I'll fold the whole unit up to make the card slots. I'm gonna go ahead and change my stitch length to like a four and a half. I know, I'm not that wild, guys. I know, you guys give me such a hard time about my stitch length, but I, I like a nice tight stitch. That's how I like my stitch lengths. Okay, so on this, again, this is just a waterproof canvas to waterproof canvas. This is the thinnest material I'm using. And it's obvious, it's doing fine with it. I mean, I have no, I have no problem with just waterproof canvas. And I'm using the exact same thread in my bobbin as I am in my top. So it's not a thinner thread in the bobbin. It's all the exact same. Okay, now I'm gonna 
sew down that midpoint of those pockets. Still using a top stitching thread. Oh, I think something broke. So now I have to see if I remember how to thread this thing, which I don't. Okay, I don't know if that's right, honestly. I don't think it is. Oh man, guys, I don't know about, this is getting very thick. I really don't know about this. This might've been a bad idea. That is a lot of layers of waterproof canvas over here. And then we're gonna add on super thick leather and then we're gonna fold it all and top stitch it. Guys, I yeah, know about this. This might've been a bad idea. Now we're gonna just base this all down. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I don't know if you have to hold the threads every time you start. That's just a habit I've formed for my other machine. You might not have to do that. Oh, and I don't actually know what my seam allowance is right now. Um, I kind of assume that the inside of the presser foot is an eighth of an inch and that the outside of the presser foot is a quarter of an inch. I should probably measure that. So yeah, it looks like right inside the foot, right along the side of the opening here, it's gonna be an eighth of an inch right outside the foot. Right outside the foot, it's a quarter of an inch. So just outside the foot over here on the right, it's a quarter of an inch. And then three eighths of an inch is somewhere over here. You know what, I actually bought one of these magnetic um, seams guide things. Oh, I don't really know how it works though. So I think what you're supposed to do is like, it's very strong magnet. So I think you're supposed to like put it where you want it. I just feel like it'll wobble a lot. Like if I hit it with a thick material, I feel like it's gonna move, but we can try it out for 3 8 of an inch. I don't know if we're using 3 8 of an inch in this pattern. So now we're doing the passport pocket. It's just a nice, easy fold in half and top stitch the folding. Now we're going to base this on to the other edge. So far, everything is easy peasy. So far, it's just, you know, waterproof canvas. One thing is you can't really decide to have it always stay needled down when it stops. So sometimes when you're lifting the presser foot to turn it, the needle's up. So I think that's just a habit thing. You're just gonna have to get in the habit of, you know, paying attention to that. All right, here's where we're at. I'm going to, see that's the thing about this magnetic guide here. If I wanna sew in the middle, I can't do it. So, a few of you actually recommended I get this tape as well. Let's see if I can open it. Can't open it. So this tape has grid marks on it, you see? To measure out. So I'm gonna, I'll try this out. This actually might be a good one. I mean, every suggestion is a good one, don't, I just, for me, I'm, I'm, I need, I need very simple, simple things. 
The more complicated it is, the less likely I'm gonna use it. First, I'm actually gonna make sure it matches up to what I have. All right, perfect. This matches up to my ruler, so that's as good as we're gonna get. And now, let's see, the thing is, is that we have to measure from the needle. So my feed dogs take up some of this space. So I'm going to trim down a quarter of an inch off the end of this tape. See how it starts at zero and goes to one. I'm gonna trim off a quarter of an inch because my feed dogs take up a quarter of an inch of space and I don't want this on my feed dogs. This tape has inches, quarter of inch, half an inch, all that stuff, but then down here it has millimeters, which is great because we sew a lot in millimeters, right? All right, we do. So now I'm just gonna line this up with the very edge of my feed dogs, because I know that's a quarter of an inch. All right, we'll try that. That seems kind of cool. I like it. Thank you for that suggestion. Okay, so let's just top stitch along these edges. Mark our midpoint, or separate our pockets. What is that for? It's a little like nub, a little nub sticking up on the back of my machine. I don't know what it's for. I don't know what it's for. You see this right here? What the heck is that for? I don't know. Okay, now I've got my elastic. I'm gonna cut off my little two inch piece of elastic for my pen holder. And once again, just using that velvet elastic. I love it. I love it, I love it. And we're just going to st stitch that on right on that midpoint where our passport pocket is. I'm gonna back stitch over to, there we go. It's funny, on my, my Bernina, when I push down on the heel, it lifts up my presser foot, that's how I have it set up. So I keep pushing down on my heel on this machine, thinking it's gonna do something. It doesn't, it doesn't. It's a big pedal, but it just goes down on your toesies, not on your heel. Okay, now we're gonna work on actually sewing some leather, why you guys are probably actually here. So I have my waterproof canvas and my leather. I'm gonna lay them right sides together, add some clips to hold them in place. And we're gonna sew these right sides together. Now this shouldn't be a problem at all. Sewing the leather to the waterproof canvas should be very simple. It's when we turn it out and we top stitch, we're gonna see where we're at. Because if we struggle with that, we're gonna really struggle with the other part of the bag. So we'll see, we'll see how this works out. Alrighty, and I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end because I'm gonna be turning this out. Down, 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 down. <laughs> I don't know why sometimes the needle will stop in the down position, other times it doesn't. It's something I'm doing, I'm sure. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, that was some wonky stitching I just did. It was a little hard to navigate the curves. Again, I think it's just gonna take practice. Can you see? You see that little, that's some wonky stitching. I'm gonna go back over it again. You know what? It might actually be better to use a bigger stitch length here instead of a smaller stitch length. I know the people I've seen who use these industrial machines, they usually use a pretty big stitch length even when they're in the construction part, so. I will tell you, if you guys have an industrial sewing machine and you know how to do this so that the needle is always in the down position when you stop sewing, let me know what I should do. I mean, I'm assuming it just takes practice and like a feel for it, but I think that's probably my most challenging thing right now is not being able to, you know, have the needle down when I'm going around curves. If you guys work with leather and you're like, oh my gosh, just that is not at all what we do with leather, let me know. I don't know, let me know. All right, so this is where we're at so far. My stitching around these corners wasn't the best, so one is a little bit more rounded than the other, but I think that's okay. I actually think I can probably push that out more to make it a little bit sharper. I do use this turning tool here to help me turn it out because again, my fingernails are very weak. I've, they've always been weak. And one tool I use all the time when I have really thick seams is this little a key fob presser. So I'm just gonna kind of gently go around and press along the edge of my seam. I don't think I need to, but this is habit. So 
This also kind of mimics ironing it because it keeps the leather in place. Once I press it a little bit with this, it seems to hold it better. Now I'm not pressing super hard. I'm just kind of going around, giving it a little press. All right, so now let's try top stitching this, which we should be good, I hope. I clearly have a bit of practice to do when top stitching this leather. And I probably, again, could have used a longer stitch length. I think that looks a little too small, but it had no problem. It had no problem. Okay, so now we have our three pieces. We have our lining and we have our exterior. I went ahead and added the snap to that and then I added the snap to our flap as well. We have our three things. I don't know, guys. Look how thick that is. Hide me. Do you see how thick that is? That is a thick seam. And I didn't skive my leather. Now let me kind of show you what that is. So this is one version of a skiving tool right here is a razor blade. So it's like a razor, you know, like a woman's razor, a men's razor. Um, what you would do is on the back of your leather, you would shave down the edges to make it thinner, to make it easier to sew. Um, I, I have not done that on this and I think I'm going to regret that decision, but to be honest, this is very messy and I'm still not great at it because if you go too far in, then you cut the leather on the front. It's actually, it's actually a little hard to cut the leather on the front. I, I, I I'm not doing it, but I, I, I probably should. We'll see. All right, we got a lot of thick layers here. Let's see how this goes. I think we need to uh, increase the seam allowance or I think we need to increase the stitch length when we go through this many layers of thick stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't actually know if you're supposed to do that. It's just, it just feels like it. From what I'm doing right now, it feels like that's what we should be doing. All right, so now we have that attached. I've gotta be honest, I'm a little nervous about this. Oh, I want it to work out. I want it to work out, but I don't know what I'm doing. Which is why we're doing this video, because you know, when you get a new thing, you don't always know what you're doing. And as much as I'd like to come on here and show you how to be an expert in industrial sewing machines, I can't do that without practicing. So, okay, right, so now we're gonna sew this whole thing at a 3 8 inch seam allowance per the pattern. Wish us luck. master these curves a little bit better. All right, so we're at some of the thickest parts right now and it is like nothing. It's like, would you give me butter? Did you give me butter to sew? Cause this doesn't feel like anything. I'm doing my best with these curves guys. It's hard. Like nothing. It's like nothing. I swear, I think I think my machine is like I think it's like you were so worried about all this. Give me something hard to sew. This is nothing. This is child's play. Don't let children play with this machine. Do not let children touch this machine. Okay. You know what, let's see. We got we got like three, actually more like five layers of leather coming up around that tab. Oh, dang it, did we run out of bobbin? No, we didn't run out of bobbin, we're good. No, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Whew, it's like, dang it, that's the one thing that can really throw us off, huh? Besides this needle coming up. I really hate this needle, it keeps coming up. All right, here we go. Bunch of layers of vinyl coming up. 
I mean, it noticed it. When we went over all those layers of vinyl where that uh, tab is, it, it noticed it. It was like, oh, hi. But then it was like, oh, bye. I, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. All right, hold on. I did something. I did something. I did something bad. We're gonna have to go around this a second time. So we're gonna go around this whole thing one more time. One more time. See if we can get it, some of these edges a little better. So right now, obviously I love this machine, but I would really like to know how to keep the needle down every time I lift up the presser foot. Because when I'm going through these curves, I kind of go quickly through them and I would like to be able to do that without really worrying that my needle's up. But I can already tell this just takes practice. You just kind of have to feel for it. So the first big test is done. And it did great. You guys, it did so good. I, my, my Bernina, ooh she would have been so mad at me if she wouldn't have even she wouldn't have even done anything with this i would have thrown this leather at her and she'd be like i'm done good night and she would have just turned off and like call me when you want to make a quilt <laughs> all right so here's where we're at I mean, you can see it looks pretty good for my first time it's pretty good i don't know what is on my face it might be cat fur drive me crazy okay i'm gonna trim this down and i'm gonna notch those corners See, it's funny when I'm sewing on this, I was like, oh, it must not be that thick because the sewing machine is just gliding over this leather like it's like it's just quilt cotton. But now that I'm cutting it, guys, this is thick. The leather's thick, the waterproof canvas, the layers of waterproof canvas where we have those card slots, it's thick. So it's a little deceptive. Oh man, I'm trying to cut right now where that, uh, that leather tab is, okay, okay, okay. Oh, this is gonna be hard. I don't like it. Where's Derek? Derek, I need you to turn this out for me. Okay, I got one side turned out for the most part. Oh, some thick seams, oh my gosh. Ooh, ooh, and we're gonna add some Deckelville Heavy in here too, I just remembered. I got like goosebumps. I'm a little nervous about this. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's reevaluate where we're at, what we're doing. Oh, guys. There's no way. I mean, look how thick that is. Look how thick that seam is. There's no way we're going to be able to sew over that. I mean, there's no, there's no way. Okay, so I got it pretty much all turned out. These corners down here where the card slots are, are almost impossible to get out. I've got it, to be completely honest, I don't feel confident in this right now. Even though everything has gone great so far, I really don't know if we're gonna be able to top stitch this, guys. This is, this is so thick. I just don't think there's any way. So now I'm adding my Decoville heavy pieces into the bag. I don't think it needs it. I don't think the Decoville Heavy is going to add much structure to this with all these thickness we already have, but why not? Let's just do it. So I've got the Decoville Heavy in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this in half to kind of give it a little look-see. I mean, it's cute. It's cute, right? Look at that. That looks so cute. So nice. Oh, can you imagine if you had like a monogram on here or something? Wowza. And it feels, oh, I've got goosebumps. It feels so good. But and it doesn't mean anything if we can't finish it, right? So I'm actually not going to add a tag to this one. You know, I probably should. Um, 
I, I don't want to, I feel like a metal tag would kind of take away from the feel of this beautiful leather, so I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not gonna add tag anywhere. I'm fine with it. Oh man. So now we have to top stitch around the entire area of this. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna grab my key fob press here. I'm just gonna press right along these areas. I, I, I just, I just, it's just these card slot pockets. I don't want my needle to break and I don't wanna mess this up. That's the hardest thing with sewing with leather or vinyl, you know, is that you can only make so many holes in your material. It's not like quilt cotton where you can kind of like rub out the hole. Once you make a hole, it's there. So you don't, you know, you don't, the pressure's there to not mess up, which stinks because I'm somebody who messes up a lot. I'm actually nervous right now <laughs> because it's so pretty and I don't want to mess it up. It's just so pretty, I don't want it to, I, I don't want to mess it up. But I'm just going around pressing along all these seams. Make sure everything is pushed out nicely. And I'm going to add clips to these seams as well to try to get it all squared up really nicely. But I'll be honest, when I was trying to add clips to the seam right here, my clips broke. <laughs> they did, my clips broke because it's so thick. <laughs> oh, guys, it's just, you know when you're making a bag and everything's going so well, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be the best thing I've ever made. And then that last step, everything falls apart. <laughs> and it's such a defeating feeling. It's okay, it's how we learn. But I really want this to work out. So I don't think I'm gonna top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I think I'm gonna top stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. I think that's gonna work out better for me. I hope. Should we just do the worst part first? I think we should. Let's just sew the hardest part first. Okay, I'm upping my stitch length to like a five millimeter stitch length. And I'm just gonna start right over here. I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. Oh, like my heart hurts right now. Oh guys, I don't know about this. I mean, not for nothing. It went over it. <laughs> Holy guacamole. <laughs> I can't believe it went over all the, I might cry. <laughs> I can't believe it did that. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's insane.
You guys, it actually did it. It stitched over all of that. Hide me so you can see. Look at that. It stitched over all of that. Now, is the top stitching the best top stitching I've ever done? No, it is rough. It is very rough top stitching, but it actually did it. What? Okay, we still have one last thing to do, but I just wanna look at it. What the actual heck? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't even, I can't even get over it. Okay, so now all I have to do is close, is sew down the middle of the back. Which I feel like, should I do one stitch or two stitches? I feel like I should do two stitches, right? That's half of a 11 and a half, guys. It's gonna be six and three quarters, no, five and three quarters. Five, five, five and a quarter and five and a quarter be 11 and a half. So five, five and a quarter and five and a quarter. No, five and a half plus five and a half is 11. So five and three quarters plus five and three quarters would be the midpoint. There we go. Five and three quarters. Go with your gut, Jess. Okay, so I just used my leather marking tool to mark my lines. It wipes off, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to uh, sew along these two lines now. Okay, last, I got my stitching down. And the last thing is because of the type of thread we're using, we actually have to burn off the edges of the thread. I haven't been doing this when I was sewing the inside because you don't see that, but top stitching, you'll wanna burn those edges or else they'll fray. So we just run a lighter right over it. Shouldn't have any problem with your material. I mean, obviously don't try to set it on fire. It's not the goal. Okay, so now let's fold this in half. Dang, look at that. That's crazy. I I seriously did not think we were going to get through this bulk right here. You see that? And yeah, the top stitching isn't perfect. I mean, let's look at it honestly. That is some wonky, wonky top stitching. I'm okay with it. If you know you're starting out for the first time, expect things to not be perfect when you're using a machine for the first time. Um, or, you know, just doing a pattern for the first time. But if you, you know, you wanna make sure it's still something giftable, what you could do is use a thread color that's the same as your leather, and then you wouldn't even notice that crazy top stitching. Honestly, I think, like, I probably will gift this to my dad, maybe my husband, and they would never notice that top stitching either. And that, that top stitching just gets better with practice. That's not a machine, that's not a pattern, that's not a material issue, that is a practice issue. That's a, that's a, that's a user issue. So, wow. This, oh my gosh. This is awesome. I love that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little sit and sew. We got to kind of try out Beastie. That's the name of my Juki. I've named it Beastie and uh, it's a beast, oh my gosh. I honestly was like on the verge of tears when we sewed over this because, because I knew it wasn't gonna work. I knew, it, I knew it wasn't gonna work. I knew that, you know, I mean, look at this. Let's even talk about tension. You know, we were top stitching right here. Let's see if I can get behind her. So we were top stitching right here. And when you are top stitching really thick material on a domestic, a lot of times you'll have tension issues. And you'll have some looping on the back. Here's the back, no looping. I mean, it looks absolutely perfect. Can it be better? Yeah. Will it be better? Yeah. The more I do this, the better this is gonna look. And I don't know the weight of the leather I'm using, but it's not a thin leather. It is a very thick leather. So, wow. 
So if you're not already subscribed to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If you like this video, if you like the sit and sew, give it a thumbs up and let me know. Do you guys want to do more of these where it's more just like a chatty, let's see what our machine can do kind of vloggy feel. Um, like I said, I, I won't do this for a pattern that I haven't put a tutorial out for. So I'm not going to make you guys kind of watch little clips of me making something that I don't have a full tutorial for. Uh, but if you are interested in this, let me know what we should do next. I know my mom is very interested in a full leather Bonnie bucket bag. She loves that pattern. Um, so let me know what you guys would like to see. All right. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.